parent-teacher conference of the year. It's our first high school, homeschool parent-teacher conference. Get out all the bags. This is my, um, what is, what is it called when, when you attend a, a conference? So we're not a conference. Yes, we are. <laughs> I'm the teacher, you're the parent. We're making this a thing. He's lucky that I make t-shirts, okay? So this is my agenda. Oh, we were. Something. That's how I got it. So we're four months into our baby being in real high school. <laughs> Not full time, just part time. We're just going to talk all of the decision making and what our days currently look like. And it was like sending my child off to preschool. Okay, so I'm going to tell you all about it. We have a whole freshman in high school. Homeschool high school. And this is our first parent-teacher conference. Homeschool edition. All right, so I am unpacking a little bit. Of course, I have my um, camera bag with all the things. But I wanted to show you guys what I packed. My planner bag, and this is my study bag. I did bring a few things for some self-care. Let me get my goodies out. I bought a lot of things for us to Bible study and faith plan because that's going to be a major part of how we're opening our hearts and minds to listen to what the Lord has for us because that is the only way things work in this homeschool and life around here. So I did bring my faith planner along mainly for um, me to make sure I keep up with my gratitude journaling and things like that. I got this one and it's the perfect little layout and you know I love these blue flowers so I'm just gonna work my way through planning. That's just my weekly planner. I wanted to bring my iPad along because I've been using it a lot more for recreation lately and I want to try to spend some time like reconfiguring it so um it could just be a lot more useful for me in planning homeschool and life on a daily basis so there's that and then i also snagged this pencil holder because i didn't want to bring my entire pen and pencil collection i brought along a few of my s gel pens and some of these erasable uh, highlighters mainly the ones that help me plan so I always use the kids homeschool colors which is basically blue green and pink and then purple is for me so just in case you were curious these are the pilot friction highlighters they um, highlight and then you can erase them if you need to I like them I like the look of them they're a little bit chalkier than a regular highlighter um, but I like them a lot so that is what is in my planner bag and then I have my Bible study bag I brought my prayer journal my life journal so Brian and I have matching life journals with this pretty little key um, his is gray it used to be mine but I, I gifted it to him <laughs> so we are documenting life in our journals together so I wanted us to get in a little bit of time journaling tonight he thinks none of this is going to happen but i know it's going to happen so anyway i brought that along and let's see if i can get the big one out of here i usually keep um my bible commentary in this bible case or bible holder but this time around i switched it out so i could carry a few things that i wanted to bring with me i have a nice Bible collection that has been bringing me so much joy in these seasons um, and the one I chose to bring along with us is my um, personal purpose Bible study this is an artesian collection journaling Bible and I use this basically to take notes and follow along with whatever the Lord is doing with my life personally um, what do you call it? It's kind of like professional development, I guess you could say. And then underneath here, I have 
um, my journal that I use with this specific Bible study that I'm going to be doing. It's really marketed towards women, but um, I have seen no reason why this cannot be for men as well. So Brian is going to do some of this with me. Um, it's what happens when women say yes to God and walk in faith. It's kind of a combination book. It's like a book, a faith-based book, and also somewhat of a Bible study or Bible workbook type of thing. So we're going to be doing a little bit of this together. And then that's it. It's not... It's not too much, but just enough. Just a few planners and notebooks and all of those things. Give it a go. All right, so we have a freshman in high school. Cam's a freshman this year. High school, homeschool. High school, and he's also in school. He's in school. So I guess I've never really, I mean... No, you posted about him on IG and then you never, you took the hiatus. Uh, oh, okay. From IG. Oh. IG. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we're going to talk a little bit about school choice. Like, how did we find a school? Why? Why did we decide to do it? I mean, this is really, I'm really making this a big deal, but it's really not. He's part-time. He's taking one class mm -hmm. um, so that he can be eligible to continue playing basketball. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't the happiest about it. I knew it was coming around, but I thought I was going to have freshman year to just like really solidify like him being in homeschool high school. But we, did, we didn't know we were going to have to go this route. We didn't know he was going to have to be enrolled. We thought, so we live in New Jersey. In New Jersey, the way it, it works is that homeschool kids are eligible to participate in their school district's non-academic extracurricular activities. However, I didn't know the part that, you know, it's not mandatory. So around this time last year, last spring, late spring, I realized that the state leaves it up to each individual district to decide whether they allow homeschool kids to participate. That's when I found out that our public school district did not allow it. And let's just back up for a moment. It has always been just our rule of thumb in homeschool life that I handle the academics. And I handle the academics and building all the curriculum and deciding what we're going to study and how we're going to study and all of those things. Our daily routines and um, assessments and all of that kind of stuff. Um, even administration things. And then Brian basically handles socialization and extracurriculars. Yeah, so he's played sports since he was probably six or seven. He's played soccer, uh, basketball year round. So that's kind of a big part of his life and he wanted to continue playing uh, after high school and then we ran up against this roadblock. So him and I had to go to our um, or just the district that we live in, we had to go to board meetings. Which went was to, a really neat experience for him. It was. We went to two board meetings over, yeah. over the summer to kind of appeal to our school district's board to um, allow him to participate. Uh, long story short, it came back that they, they said no. Um, but they didn't let us know until around September, mid-September. So then that kind of... Ruined everything. <laughs> yeah, it just kind of left us kind of in a... Uh, because I had, by that time, do. I had already decided what our, you know, I had already built my curriculum. I knew what I was using, how his schedule was going to yeah. be laid out. Um, we had had our initial meetings and everything about how we were going to um, approach, you know, this first year of homeschool, uh, high school. And so when we found out that, you know, we were going to have to do something a little bit different, I mean, my world came crumbling down. His didn't. Well, his did by way of me, but <laughs> it was just a, it was just a lot that we had to figure out what other options we had. Yeah, yeah. So my whole world. Yeah, it, it was a it was a big change for Serena. She had already Huge, had everything massive. laid out. In the end, we ended up finding out that the most of the so we live near Delaware and Pennsylvania. Most of the Christian schools in our area, if not all, they have this situation where they allow homeschool kids to take classes there and if you take a um, certain amount of credits then you are eligible for all the extracurricular activities. Uh, in the middle of November, so he started beginning the second marking period, it's a big adjustment for him. He now has official grades and 
test and which was so uh, I mean really it was so neat to be a part of that experience um of course I'm flipping out like have I prepared him enough like <laughs> is he gonna yeah. completely feel like I he is ill prepared and I did not do my job um but God is merciful and he's yeah gracious and everything has been working out really well despite any tantrum that I throw um, along the way. Uh, we have so many like little stories of his first experience with his Scantron. Like <laughs> everything. It's just this is his first time in a classroom. This is Cameron's first time yeah. in a school classroom. So yeah. he for him it was very much um, Honestly, we were, uh, we, uh, we, it was like dropping him off for his first day of like preschool. Yeah, I took him. I, I dropped him off, and I, I couldn't that was, do it. That was that was strange. Everyone else had the kindergarten experience, first day of school, and I'm I'm doing this in ninth grade. <laughs> um, but for all of us, it was very. It was just a a new, very new experience. Yeah. And Cameron is probably more of the introverted of the three. Yeah. So he was very much reserved and didn't know what, what the experience was going to be like on the school side, the grading side, just mm-hmm. was he going to be, he was, he was just so concerned, was he going to be able to catch up? And then he had the, the basketball side that he had to try out and he was, yeah. it was um, a very, it was ner- a, nervous about. Yeah. So I pretty much put a pause on, I guess I pretty much cut like half of our curriculum, the plan that we had, I pretty much cut it in half. I knew he was going to be gone, you know, the second half of the day that I usually allow for him being along. Plus, I knew it was going to like really change our flow. Uh, We're used to it being the three of us. So I, it took major adjusting for me. And I think the best thing that I did was cut down what I expected of, you know, the work that we were going to get accomplished um, and kind of phased into it week by week. Mm-hmm. I added a little bit more each week to our plate um, just to allow for the changes and adjustments because your girl was going through it. <laughs> and I just wanted to make sure that I was there for him and made him nice and um Made him nice and comfortable and calm, and then you know adjusted to the other kids too, not having him around. Yeah, and we didn't want him to fall behind or yeah, we wanted him to be able to stay on track with you know his you know his regular homeschool schedule. So it was a a lot of adjustment, just being that it was un unplanned for and happened you know mid November. Uh, So, but now it's it's good. You know, I think he's in a my hand. You want to hold it? Mm -hmm. That's too bright. Yeah, that's too bright. Is it better? Mm, I yeah. can't really see it. There. Now I think he is in a. I think he's in a. He's a good, good rhythm. You know, we just finished basketball season. He did really well with the team. This class is going really well. He's um, adjusted very, very yeah. well as far yeah. as like time management yeah. is concerned. Like I wasn't sure if he was. He's very particular yeah. about you know his time blocks and mm-hmm. when he's getting things done. His it, homework. In the very beginning, it was a little bit of a challenge because he knows the rhythm and how we prioritize like learning mm-hmm. over checking things off yeah. like checking boxes yeah. but definitely during the first few weeks he kind of you know reverted well can you revert back to something you never really no, did he kind of <laughs> he kind of like he was very 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 serious about checking off these boxes yeah. so it, it, it's like he slipped back into you know making others happy and I had to remind him like we you know he's in school that for like the school is working for him not yeah. him for it you yeah. know so not we're not just trying to check the boxes and get the assignments done um, but we're also trying to learn mm-hmm. um, and he definitely notices the differences between yes. what he the way he learns at home and how it's like really focused on you know that true education and how school is a lot more you know to get to the course structure and yeah 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 so it's been really good for him despite all my tantrums yeah yeah he's done he's done well he's done well he likes it um it's still too bright sorry y'all it's it's okay bright. and it's yeah so uh yeah we might have to do another video to kind of talk about all the different yeah particulars you this know, is just the beginning been, since but, we're back and all, and this is the parent-teacher conference and all. It's not a conference. 
<laughs> it is, it is. I, I told Brian that I was really trying to go big with it. He was like, well, this is kind of big. I was like, It's no. a we're away from one night. It's not a conference. <laughs> it's a conference. Okay. This is my parent teacher conference. Okay, thank okay. you very much. Anyway, so he's doing really well. Um, now the challenge is trying to see how it's going to go for next year. Um, we're still going to stick with the same school, uh, but we have to figure out what the course offering mm -hmm. is going to be. Is he going to take Spanish too? Um, is it going to, you know, time wise work out? Yeah. Because uh, Brian actually ends up taking him to class mm -hmm. and to practices um, every day, so I can keep moving with the other kids. So um, the way it but, worked logistically was he was able to take a, a eighth period class. That was the only way it was going to work for him to take the last class of the day. And then that roll right into practice. Yeah. So whether what happens next year is kind of dependent, um, you know, on the schedule, on, on their schedule, uh, what's available in, in that time frame. So. And we're trying to document this to remember, you know, this part of the journey. But let us know how you guys do things. We know we're not the only one um, where our homeschool kids are also taking yeah. courses outside of the home. Um, so let us know how you guys do things. Was it adjustment for you? Have you done it all along? Like it was a big deal for me because if you guys have been around for any amount of time, you know that I'm all about this, you know, Falco family, our Faith and Love Academy and this, you know, adventurous mindset that's very much so a lot more unstructured than it is structured so having to build in a more structure it's been very very beneficial uh, but it has been hard so let us know all the things on how you you guys have navigated that in any part of your homeschool journey if you're there and if um, you haven't like yet you have kids that aren't in high school but they are in interested in participating in extracurriculars you probably want to start and get all of the details a little bit before I did. You know, and that's something they, we definitely they, talked about there. a long time ago because I've been preparing for um, high school, <clears throat> just trying to wrap my mind around how we were going to do high school for quite some time. Um, and I'm going to be sharing more about that, how like I take the four-year approach, which I'm sure other people um, also do. But uh, yeah, I've been preparing for it for a long time and I try to let him know that's something we should have gotten on a long time ago so we weren't met with that you know, issue, yeah. but it's okay. Um, it's worked out the way it's worked out. And again, like things just seem to start fitting into place. Yeah. He loves being at his school. It's just the right size. Um, the people have been uh, really great for him to, you know, mm -hmm. just kind of put his foot in the door and his little introverted self. Um, and just seeing him like grow and flourish and really enjoy being uh, with his peers at the school and interacting with the teacher. It's been really a good experience so far and I'm grateful for that. While we're here at our parent-teacher conference, like I said, I cut half of our things yeah. out. So now that we're nice and settled in and basketball season is over, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be adding some of those things back in. So that's probably what I'll do. We will take out the planners and decide how we're going to. He'll help me figure out how to execute because I can get a little bit in my head he about carried it. Away. He carried away. <laughs> So he's going to help me figure out how to execute um, so that it works out for Cameron and also for us and we can continue moving along and just having peace in our homeschooling life. I guess that's it. That's it? Um, wait, let me see if there was something else I wanted to talk about for now. Oh, he's also he's also started track. So that's yeah. the thing. Trying to hone in on what is our purpose and plan for it in this season now that he's in high school. So we're just going to talk about all of those things. Go get yeah. something to eat. Yeah. Try to be as connected as possible and so that we can make decent decisions, you know. But that's it. Oh, sorry. Mm. Say it again. What was I saying? That's it. That's oh, it. but that's it. We're going to go and uh, try to relax, get something to eat, and then we'll get on to planning some things, you guys. So. All right.
Don't say